everyone, I'm Denisha Devnarayan and you're watching the Full Quota Podcast on One World Sports Radio. Hello, hello, hello and welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast, your favorite South African cricket podcast. It is the Full Quota Podcast. Um, I'm recording from a very interesting place. I'm in, I'm in Harare right now for the Women's Cricket World Cup qualifiers and we've got Tim who made his uh, commentary debut for us in uh, Cape Town, live at the stadium for that Titans game. He saw his fave uh, there, Simon Harmer, get 10 wickets um, in a match. So that must have been fun, Tim. Uh, it was uh, it was a very enjoyable experience. Uh, I'm, I'm not going not gonna to lie. Um, very cool to see Simon Harmer in action um, doing his thing. Yeah, no. Well, he didn't come alive when I was at when we were doing the Titans against the Dolphins, but luckily came alive in Cape Town. So that's a good thing. Um, so South Africa is playing the Netherlands this week, and so um, it was very interesting to to get a, a friend of ours. Uh, well, Carla is a is is, is Otto's wife, um, and uh, Otto is a commentator on the show, but she's a friend of 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 the of the radio station, and she get, put us into contact with a very interesting. Um, cricketer in relation to this series. He'll be playing in this series um, for the Netherlands' this ODI series. And it's a Super League uh, series as well. So it's very important with regards to World Cup qualification and, and, and everyone's ambition. South Africa is also trying to get into the top eight. They're in 10th. And the Netherlands also trying to cause an upset. So that was pretty where we were, pretty much where we wanted to go. So we got um, Stefan Maibib to come and join us to just have a discussion about his journey, how he got to the Netherlands, how his cricketing uh, has gone through. He was born in South Africa, so there must be some um, extra feelings when he comes up against South Africa as he comes and plays against them this week, um, these next two weeks in the ODI series. So let's just get Stefan Meiberg on and, and have a, a very lovely discussion with him. Hi, Stefan. How are you doing? Uh, good evening, Paul and Tim. Yeah, and thanks for One World Sports for having me tonight. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, it, it's really awesome because obviously you're in South Africa, so it was really nice to um, to be able to get you to come and and and, and chat to us about uh, about Netherlands cricket and, and as well as yourself, Stefan. I think for me to start off with, obviously everybody, a lot of people know that you're born in in South Africa. You're born in Pretoria. You're a Northern's boy. Um, and so, how did you? How was your cricketing journey um, growing up? How did you get into the game? Yeah, so basically I started playing cricket when I was only four years old. Uh, got an older brother who played first-class cricket for 20 years, Johan Maiberg. Uh, my father introduced us to the game. He just always wanted us to do all sorts of sports. Uh, actually played rugby, cricket, did athletics, played tennis, you know, played all the sports. And uh, I think when I went to high school, my my love for cricket was just a little bit more than for the other sports. Um and absolutely loved it. And then my brother actually played for the Titans when he was still at school. So, you know, watching him on the big stage, uh, you, you sort of envied that. And then um, I always wanted to walk in his footsteps. And, uh, yeah, so I started from a real young age. Uh, and as you said, Pretoria born, uh, went to Pretoria Boys High. And then, um, yeah, so that's how my cricket journey started. And you, you played um, at, at the 19 level with the likes of South uh, Plc, Abel de Villiers, uh, Aaron Pankiso, all, all chaps that went on to become Proteus. Uh, what was that experience like to, to rub shoulders with, with those guys at, at, at a young age? Yeah, it's actually incredible. I, uh, I've, I'm still in touch with AB and Faf quite, quite a bit. And uh, I actually saw a photo of us when we were still under 10, starting to play together wow. for the Northerns under 11 side back then. Um, and then our under 19 team was, yeah, if, you, if I look back now, it was full of names. Uh, I mean, I opened with uh, AB, we had Faf, we had Heino Kuhn, we had Rulf van Amerva, we had... Craig Williams, that's currently playing for Namibia. Uh, Pangiso, um, we had Heinrich Leroux that played a few first-loss games for the Lions. France and Kuna that played SN under 19, played for Titans. So it was, yeah, we were blessed with an incredibly strong um, provincial team. Um, and then I was blessed to be in a, a very strong 
academy team the year after where we had the likes of Dale Stein, Ethi Mubilati, Manli, Manla Mashimbaya, basically joining our under-19 team. So always been uh, lucky to play with with the superstars. Wow, yeah, those those names just roll off the tongue for you. Some of us are just still in awe, just wondering, wow, okay. Uh, that's a very long uh, resume and really lovely um, to, to just go down memory lane, especially with A.B. De Villa's retiring um, this week. Um, so how was you, so you obviously moved to Holland. What, 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 what made you move to Holland? How was the, um, what, what was, was there an opportunity? Was it just a change in lifestyle? Um, where, where, where were you, um, in, in, in that, in that spectrum? Yeah. So my journey started in the Netherlands. Um, didn't, I didn't go there to play for Holland, to be honest. Uh, what happened was I actually played club cricket with Neil McKenzie back then mm -hmm. in Pretoria and he was in Holland the year before and the club, hey cricket club, they wanted him back. And then due to Pretoria's, he, he couldn't go back. So he asked me if I would be available to, you know, to go in his place. So I basically went because Neil wasn't available and had a nice season. And back then I still played for Northern. So it was basically the season and the year after the club wanted me to come back. So I went again, came back and played for Northerns. And then the third year I went to Holland, um, Peter Drennan, who was the Dutch national coach at that time, uh, basically came up to me and he said, listen, uh, the ICC has got a rule that if you live in a country for four years in a row, for 187 days, I think it was, you can represent that country. Uh, we would like you to play for Holland. Would you be interested? And yeah, for me, it was all, all growing up. I always wanted to play international cricket. And I thought, wow, that, mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity and something that I, I couldn't say no for. Because um, back then I played for the amateur side and just couldn't get in a Titans team that was <laughs> absolutely mm -hmm. jam packed with really superstars. Neil McKenzie, uh, Jacques Rudolph, they, they all still played for the Titans. So mm. I just couldn't get an opportunity. And I thought, you know, to get into the international um, stage, that it was a difficult for me then to. Uh, okay. I think we got the gist of that. We just lost you a little bit there, Stefan. We just. Going to work with the Wi-Fi issues a little bit. Don't worry. Um, we can see that it's, it's slightly better. Um, so, obviously, when you obviously got to Holland and they said you wanted to play, um, so how was your debut? How did you, you know, when you got that opportunity, you've gone through those four years, when they said now's your time, you're making your debut, um, how did you feel? Um, I think your debut was against Kenya at The Hague. How, how was that feeling? Because, obviously, International cricket doesn't matter which country you play for; it's still pretty prestigious. Yeah, no, definitely. So I'm I'm a massive family man, and to be honest, my my last year that I had to live in Holland and go through a winter where it was snowing, and you know, you're cycling to gym every day and to training, and it was really cold. I was I was very close to pulling out. I uh, have to be honest; it was really really tough. So when I made my debut for Holland, it was actually in the county competition first, um, where my brother and my sister actually came to come and support me. Um, and it, it was just an unbelievable feel, feeling um, to play for Holland. Um, and then, yeah, it was a couple of weeks later where I made my international debut against Kenya in The Hague. Um, yeah, and then, to be honest, once I, once I got onto that field, I realized that all the sacrifices I made um, you know, to leave the country that I love so dearly and still love so dearly and the family behind, um, for me at that stage, it was definitely worth it um, just to, to be able to say that I've played an international cricket game. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, you also played league cricket before you um, went, went to the way of uh, Holland. Uh, so you're playing your, your club cricket in South Africa, you played club cricket in England, club cricket in the Netherlands. Do you think doing that, going playing in three different countries, gave you a good grounding before you went on to play international cricket? Do you think that, that gave you a good grounding? Um, yes. 
Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, you get to to plant different conditions, different areas. Um, and I mean, club cricket doesn't always prepare you for international cricket. There's quite a big step, um, but you still get to play against some international players and some very quality players and you, you learn from them. Um, but most of all, you learn, you learn learn about yourself so you get to you get to figure out strengths and weaknesses are um, so i think that's definitely helped a lot that you that i was able to, to travel the world and play at different leagues 100 percent i'm just gonna now start moving over into a lot more netherlands uh, cricket specific um questions how has obviously netherlands cricket played as you said in the county system They've also got the European League. They've been an associate nation for a very long time. Um, how has the level of cricket been over the past couple of over the years that you've been in, in Holland? You know, has obviously the quality's improved, but you know, where is it? Where do you think it's going? And and is it is it also like an opportunity for young South Africans who are here looking to make a, a, a to start a, a professional career that side? Yeah, so Netherlands cricket has definitely improved a lot. So basically, when I just started, we we probably had nine very good players, and then always two players to f almost fill the team. Uh, I, I don't want to say that it sounds crude, but um, if we had injuries, we would have been in trouble. Um, we're developed into a team where we can have, like at the World Cup, apparently we had a couple of guys who missed out on on squad selection and that's also good enough to play so we've just grown as a as a group where we had probably nine good players to now about 20 players so in that sense netherlands cricket has improved a lot but unfortunately the numbers in the netherlands is not of of any significance if i can say it that way we we don't have that many kids playing the sport because and so big a sport and their seasons run so long that those talented sportsmen um, can't really play cricket um, because they, they commit to football or to hockey is a, is a bit of a struggle to be honest but as a national team I think um, we've really improved a lot we've become far more professional um, the guys train extremely hard um so even now when we have a three-hour training session it's never a three-hour training session guys will probably be there four hours because guys are always keen to do extra so extra fielding extra batting extra bowling and that's why the the level of our national team has definitely improved yeah uh, it, it certainly it certainly has, has improved uh I've, I've i've seen that uh uh the pro progression there certainly in, in, in shorter format um just on on this particular tour so you, you, you're here now for, for the tour against south africa what are the team's plans um going into the series and and your own personal goals have you got your own personal goals that you that you would like to achieve in in this series that is coming up Yeah, so so for us, we we are also realistic. We we know that South Africa is if we play at one hundred percent, they play at one hundred percent. They're going to win. Um, but we also believe in ourselves that we can also get an upset. Um, uh, we we played really good cricket against Ireland when probably we weren't given much of a chance. Um, we had a cup, unfortunately. Um, a lot to do with uh, the very little preparation we had, um, but we're preparing really well for South Africa, and um, we also have to be honest that South Africa is probably resting five or six of their key players, which then enables, uh, it gives us a little bit of a chance, to be honest, and I think personally we would be happy if we can get away with one win uh, from, this, from this trip. If we get one out of two or one out of three, um, games um we'll we'll see it as a successful tour for us um but we just want to be competitive 
and play good cricket, the cricket that we know that we can play, that we unfortunately didn't play at the World Cup. <laughs> um, speaking about that World Cup, um, obviously it was an early exit out of that World Cup, out of the, the qualifiers. Um, if, if you can just give us a, a sense of, of, of what happened um, in there, was it just the pitches? Because everyone was complaining about how how slow and low they were. They weren't. They weren't. Thing or was it just just something else where you just couldn't get the team finding its rhythm going through? Yes, a hundred percent. The the pitches weren't very good, but then both teams play on the on the pitch, so we can't we mm -hmm. can't blame that. Um, I think for us, the main thing was preparation. Uh, we basically played three. T20 game since 2019. Uh, a lot of us only got together at because we got a few county players. We only got together in Dubai, and so we, as a team, we felt like we didn't we we didn't prepare well um, individually. Maybe yes, but as a team, you know, you you need to play a lot of games. Uh, I heard something. Namibia played 47 T20 games before the World Cup. So then you're always going to struggle to beat a team because, yeah, there's nothing that beats game time. So you mm -hmm. can train in the net all you want. And unfortunately in Holland, uh, after the our club season, the weather's also been so bad that it's been indoor training, which is mm -hmm. everything is completely different um, than playing at a World Cup and playing the big stage against uh, very good opponents. So our preparation, unfortunately, was, I want to say, dreadful because it was and not all um yeah our own fault um COVID also played a massive role mm -hmm. that we play any international cricket in 2020 um so it was a it was a bit of a struggle for us because uh, we were i almost want to say a better team than 2014 and 2014 we we beat england we beat mm -hmm. Ireland, we beat uae we lost to south africa by six runs we lost to New Zealand last over. And if you look on paper, we were probably, yeah, maybe a little bit stronger or as strong. So then to lose three games, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a real bummer, to be honest. Yeah, there's a bit of pull to solo. Speaking about Namibia, they were playing everybody, including the Titans. They beat the Titans. They beat the Knights. We were wondering what was going on. It seemed like they found... It, it kind of worked for them because they were in and around like South Africa and there was a lot of cricket being fed into them. Whereas I think with you guys in Holland, it's a little bit tougher being on the mainland of Europe and not a lot of people play cricket. You know, you might have to go to the UK to play cricket and with COVID, it, it, it just didn't work out um, possibly in, 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 in that way. Um, I think one last, one last question from me, Stefan, is how are you feeling coming up against the country of your birth? in the country of your birth for your adopted country yeah for me it's just an unbelievable blessing i uh, i can't i almost can't describe it in words it will be it will be so nice to play against south africa super sport park basically where i grew up as well um so yeah for me it's uh, almost can't describe the feeling i really feel blessed and uh yeah south africa is uh as always, my first team, I always support them at the World Cup. Um, of course, I'll, I'll, I'm going to try my best to to try and beat them. But, uh, yeah, I've got a, such a soft spot for South Africa. As, uh, I might live in the Netherlands now, but it's still it's still my country. Are you going to sing both anthems? I would like to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, Talking about uh, playing South Africa, uh, um, do you? I've just got a couple of questions. Do you remember the game you played in 2013? You played against South Africa in a 50-over game. And um, talk to us about the influence of um, a couple of guys that, that uh, South African listeners will know, Rula Fatamava, and I think you've got Ryan Tenduskata in the... Um, support staff I, th I think for, th for this tour um so just talk to us about about those guys and, and their influence on the team yeah uh massive so ryan's with us as a betting consultant for this tour he was with us at the world cup um just finishing off his career and uh, absolutely brilliant career he's had 
Uh, I mean, he's played IPL, he's played county cricket, he's done extremely well for the Netherlands and um, such a great gentleman off the field. Uh, guys learn a lot from him. Then having a guy like Rudolf van der uh, in your team, that's uh, that's a guy you're probably always going to pick first. He's such a mm. fighter. He'll, he's got a never die attitude. Um, so if, to have him on your side is just brilliant um, because he's a, he's the type of guy that's he's definitely not going to stand back. Doesn't matter who he faces, um, which is which is absolutely phenomenal. And we've we've actually got a few South African players in our mm. team. So I think they'll they'll all be keen to to show what they can do. Yeah, that's Brandon Glover. Do you Colin remember Aspen that? As well? do you, yes. Do you, sorry, sorry, Pop, sorry. Do you remember that game in 2013 against South Africa? Yeah, so we played South Africa in Amsterdam, um, actually, and uh, Eric Swazinski that opened the batting with me got 98 and he got run out in the bowlers, bowlers side. Uh, I think that's the one thing that really sticks with me. Um, but that was also it was a we we were actually very competitive in that game against them um, when they were also had a star-studded um, team. Amla played JP Dumney scored an unbelievable 150. Faf made a few runs in that game, so they all they all played, um, and then we still managed to give them a good run for their money. So yeah, definitely a game quite close to my heart and uh, a game I'll never forget. <laughs> That's 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 true. Um, yeah, I think for me, the fifty um, of seventeen balls that you scored. I just want to get a thought of of how it how it came about. What were you thinking on the day um, as as the runs just kept on piling up in that in that T Twenty? Yeah, so obviously leading uh, or leading up to the game um, for us, it was always about qualifying to go to the main stage. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, it almost didn't matter what what happened. We had to go through. That, that was the only thing we thought about. So when we field it first, you obviously want to restrict them as low as possible um, to have a good chance. And I remember standing in the field and O'Brien, the boys, pointer, they were hitting the ball just everywhere they wanted. You get a little bit more nervous and nervous. Um, but, yeah, as a, as a Christian, I always believe – you know, what should happen will happen. And we walked off and for some reason I was just extremely calm. And the captain came to me, uh, Peter Boren at the time, and I looked at him and I said, we've got this. And it was just something I can't, I can't explain the calmness that came over me. And I was like, no, we've got this. And even him as the captain, he didn't believe it, to be honest. And I just said, we're going to do it. Because I'm, I'm not gonna block a ball. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and have a go. And um, it was just one of those days where you actually, you know, you hit everything in the middle. And I think uh, at that stage, I don't know if it's still a world record. We got 91 in the power play, and I think that just gave so much belief to the to the rest of the boys when we we got off to a flyer that everyone started to believe that we can do it. And then every batsman that just came in just. <laughs> Kept hitting the ball in the middle of the bat. So, yeah, it's one of those games that you'll definitely always remember. Wow, that's... Uh, that, that's <laughs> yes, Tim? Would that be your, would that be your best moment uh, playing for the Netherlands? Um, actually, no, actually not. It was it was special, but I think two, two games later, I played against South Africa and I got 50 against South Africa uh, of, I think it was 25 balls. Um, and for me, that was that was more special. Uh, you know, you face a guy like uh, I think Tutorbe could have been number one ODI bowler at that stage in the world, and Dale Stain. So to score a fifty against them for me personally um, was almost more special. It was very nice the qualification to the next group for Ireland, and to know that you've you've helped your team get there. But personally, for me, the my my best. Innings I feel was against South Africa at that 2014 World Cup. Awesome. Okay. Um, Stephen, we lost you there a little bit, but really we got you um, most importantly. Um, so, just to give you an update, your 91 runs that you put up in the power play with Peter Boren 
is number three in the world right now. Um, so the only two teams that have done that, 93 runs by Ireland, Paul Sterling and Kevin O'Brien. Uh, that was against the West Indies in 2020 uh, at St. George's. And then West Indies scored 98 runs against Sri Lanka earlier this year at the Coolidge Ground. So it lasted a very long time. <laughs> so that's a, that's, a, that's a very awesome thing to do. One last question for me. When was the last time you played at St. Jude? And how excited are you to be playing at your home ground? Wow, the last time I played at Super Sport Park was probably, I would say, we played we played a warm up game there for Holland about four or five years ago. But mm. the last competitive game I played there, I think, must have been two thousand and nine, so a good twelve years ago. Um, yeah, extremely extremely excited. Uh, it's also my my favorite uh, ground in South Africa, so really looking forward to. it. Okay, now I think it's a lot of batters' favorite ground in South Africa. Jacques Callas, Ashley Babla, <laughs> A.B. de Villiers. Everyone just seems to score runs at, at, at Centurion. So, uh, Stephen, I'm sure you're excited to probably also just put down some runs, you know, put a little bit of a marker in there to say that I've, I've, I've also uh, enjoyed uh, batting here as well. Yeah, no, definitely. That would be, that would be such an honor. Um, to be able to to do well there. Yeah, and so I think for me, what's the plan for you going forward for your career? Um, obviously, um, we, we're moving forward into 2021. There's World Cups being announced and everything being announced. Where do you see yourself and, and where your cricketing career is going to? Uh, at, the, at the moment, I'm a little bit at a crossroad um, as I, I've actually been in the corporate world for the last two and a half years working. Um, so I literally had to take off from work to go to the World Cup, mm. had to take off from work to come here. So I'm, I'm not a professional cricket player anymore. So mm. as much as I would like to play next year, the World Cup, um, we've got so many games next year that it's, it's difficult it would be difficult for me to commit to everything. So personally, I would love to play in another World Cup next year. So, but yeah, at this stage, it's a, it's a little bit difficult um, mm. to know exactly how it's going to plan out. But I think uh, next year would definitely be my last year, if I can say it that way. Okay. Those, those um, are certain pitches will suit you. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> those those pitches will definitely be very nice to play at T20. Yeah, no. Um, uh, yeah, so I think that's the end of our, of our interview, Stefan. I really enjoyed it and really loved your insight and, and to get a, a little piece of, of your experiences. I just want to say I wish you all the best. May God go with you. Um, I'm loving the, your, your quote of Ecclesiastes. I thought that was very apt because there is a time and place for for everything and you know sometimes it, it is your day and it is your day and i and i and i hope for your yourself and your team uh going forward and in this series and and further than that that the time and place meets once more a couple more times maybe one game in centurion even though i do want the purchase to win three no because we they, they've made such a meal of the super league uh outside of that i i honestly do wish you uh, all the best. And we're looking out for you. Um, and hopefully you do get to score runs at Centurion. Thanks, Mpo. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, thank you very you. much. I'm sorry. And all the best. And, Cheers, yeah, much. It's your homecoming, so enjoy it. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> sure. Thank you. So that was Stefan Myberg um, coming on the Full Quota podcast just to discuss about his career. And Lam and I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it too, Tim. Uh, how was that? That yeah, that was good. Um, always get uh, always good, good to get a, a point of view from a South African who's made his life elsewhere, and to get uh, his story. Um, and they they all take different uh, avenues. These players that no one player is the same. Um, mm. It's very interesting to see how it was. It was not exactly a plan to play for the Netherlands. It was just. A plan to play elsewhere and and see see what happened. So yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was some job job conversation for sure. Yeah, and yeah. So to close out the show, 
Um, we've got obviously the full quota podcast, the normal one that's probably going to be coming out soon. So watch out for that one. We're going to preview this series of the Netherlands. We're also going to preview SAA. A lot of our commentators are making their way to bloom because SAA tour is starting soon. So we've got a jam packed schedule here at One World Sports Radio. Thank you for the support. Remember, please do like and subscribe and follow us. We covered the rugby. If you want to relive all those moments in that England match, you can do that as well. Um, and yeah, just give us your support. Thank you very much for your support and have a great, great day. Um, Tim, we'll chat again later this week. We're probably going to be previewing a whole lot of cricket that's coming up. So do get excited for myself and Paul and Tim. Have a great day. Goodbye. And les sale kakakiso. <laughs>